interface with DTMS. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a little program that we've been using here at Fort Sam Houston to track attendance. And the, how this thing came about was, uh, as usual, you have mandatory training and everybody shows up to the auditorium and there's three, four hundred people and there's five clipboards and everybody's signing away and these are long lines. So we thought that there was a more efficient way to account for people as they attended the different sessions. So what we came up with was uh, recognize, we recognized that uh, we can use a cat cat and a scanner to capture um, attendance as people came through the door. And so essentially what I want to demonstrate today is a little program that we put together uh, using Microsoft Access uh, that allows uh, anyone to capture attendance at any event. It doesn't have to be training, it could be any, anything that you have uh, anything that you have at your location. Okay, so uh, moving right along, uh, here's my purple screen. We can quickly uh, go through that. I'm not going to read the slides uh, for the most part, but get right into the, uh, the database itself. Okay, so this database, once you have it installed on your computer, now I suspect that uh, everybody in DoD who has a government laptop, more often than not, more likely 99.9% .9 has Microsoft Office installed. And in that install is Microsoft uh, Access. So once you receive this data, should you, this um, database, should you decide to use it, there would be, there's no special configuration that you got to take it to the IT person and all you need to do is copy the file onto your onto your computer and begin using it. So there's no technical support that you would need uh, in the beginning uh, as you begin to use uh, the computer. Uh, before I go in, uh, you see I have two little scanners on the top. This is what they look like, the ones that we bought. Uh, at the end of the slide, uh, there's a location where you can buy the scanner and the model number, etc. The only thing I want to say about the scanner at this point is that ensure that the cord that comes connected to the scanner is a USB cord. Uh, this cord, uh, the USB is important. Anyway, so you have this, com this um, database. Uh, you get it on a disk, you copy it over to your hard drive. Uh, you have your scanner, you plug your scanner into the USB port and you click the you click the icon for the for the program and the first thing that comes up is uh, what you see on the screen right here now uh, most computers uh, have security enabled and you might have these little pop-ups that come about that prevents you from going directly into the program so I just wanted to put this in here so in case that happens on your computer all you got to do for the one on the left where it says security alert, you select the con enable the content and click OK and the screen uh, it goes away and the program is functional. The same thing for the one on the right. Uh, in some people's cases, uh, it would probably take you right into the right into the program, then that's that's fine. So this screen here is a screen, uh, the next thing that would happen or that you need to do, of course, is to select the training that you are conducting. Now, the list, there's a pre-populated list in there of the common training that's in DTMS with a DTMS class number and the description of what the training is all about. Um, have no fear. You can put your own training in there uh, if you need to, and I'll show you how to do that later on. Nevertheless, uh, in this particular case, let's just say we're going to do a healthcare personal uh, detainee healthcare training. Once you select the once you select the class, then you click on begin scanning. Once you click that button, another screen appears, and this is this screen here is the main screen that you would see and you would use uh, the most as you go about taking attendance uh, at the events that you that you are responsible for. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I have some notes that's on the on the screen uh, in the slides here. Uh, as long as you follow it, all you have to do really is aim and aim or should I say aim and shoot or just scan the card 
and the name gets recorded against the class that you selected previously. So if you look at the top of the screen, it says event. It was the first, in this particular case, is uh, ethics. Uh, so that's the class that you take in attendance for at this point. Um, there's a button that says ready to scan. Uh, you don't even have to click that button initially. You just go ahead and uh, start scanning. Now, as you begin to scan, what you would see, uh, uh, here's a, oh, let's just talk about scanning for a minute, by the way. Uh, in, in the scanning phase, uh, you can scan a couple of ways. And uh, some people hold a, hold a card in their hands. Other people put the card on the desk and then scan it. Either way, the scanner needs to be like five or six inches away from the car, from the, from the car card. Uh, on the car card, there's two sets of barcodes. The one that you have to scan is the one to the front. The one to the back is of no use to us for this program. I say again, you have to scan the front barcode. So you um, you have the card on the desk or in your hand. It's five to six inches away. You pull the trigger on the scanner, and the right uh, the red beam comes out, of course, and covers the the barcode. And you hear a beep. Once you hear the beep, the beep means that that card was scanned. Once you once the card is scanned, the person's names appear to the right. Uh, in the little box that it, uh, where it shows a list of names or attendees and the date and time that you scan the card. Also to the center it says success scan an X card. Now uh, with long lines and at the rate that the card scan uh, you need to be careful and ensure that you hear the beep or confirm that the person's name shows up on the list before you scan the other card. Another note to point out you can have two scanners on one computer. However, both of you all cannot scan at the same time. So you would have to alternate scan if you only have one computer and two scanners and you're trying to get the line down uh, rather quickly. All right. All right. So you, so you scan card after card and uh, it, go, it takes about a second, a second and a half. I, I want to point out something about CAC cards. Um, 99.5% of the cards are going to scan. You're going to meet a 0.5% whose card, for whatever reason, wouldn't scan. And we have encountered this in the past, or currently we encounter it all the time. And we always have our crude and tried handy uh, clipboard on the side so that they can sign in um, manually as opposed to scanning the card. Afterwards, you can go back in and type in their information. But uh, for the most part, uh, everybody. 99.5% of the cards would scan. So you might do a couple of events and everything worked fine, and then you, on your sixth event, there's two people's card who wouldn't scan. Obviously, they're keeping back the line. You just move them off to the side, uh, have them sign in manually, and you can continue scanning so that your operation flows uh, smoothly. Um, okay, so we're moving along. I, I see uh, some notes and questions. I want to wait till the end and then kind of go back and review all the questions and answer them one, one at a time. Uh, so, you scan your 300 people or your 10 people, how many other people come up. It's now time for you to get the information out of the program. At this point, you can print a, or export the attendance roster. It gives you the person's rank, uh, name, and uh, the date and time that they scan and the class that they attended. You can export it uh, to Excel, to PDF, I mean, whatever you want to do with it at that point. Uh, this is just the attendance roster. This has nothing to do, do with DTMS. That's a little further on down in the briefing. I'm just saying if you have to present to your high-ups or you just for your own records as to who attended and at what time they attended and what class they attended, then this roster here uh, is, is for you in that you can export it to whatever format you, you uh, prefer. Um, the next couple of slides talk about how you uh, save it, and it's a typical thing with with most uh, computers. If you you use computers a lot, uh, as when you do, when it's just like you have a Word document and you say save as. It's the same thing. You select a location. You can select your your desktop, or you have some folder that you save the stuff in. You can put it there. And this is this slide just attempts to show you that is is a typical uh, save operation that you are doing. 
Okay, so now let's talk about the classes. I told you that uh, it comes pre-populated with classes that you can select. However, you might have your own class that you want to put in there that is not on the list that the database comes with. And this is the point where you would go in and add your own classes so that the list, uh, so that it shows uh, in the drop-down list. Uh, this is a screen that allows you to add classes. You click the add record. The first thing you do is click the add record uh, button, just like the slide says, and then you enter the information and click save. And when you go back to that front screen where you select the class, that class that you just entered will be uh, attached to that list or be part of that list, and then you can select it and start taking attendance against that uh, class. Uh, in the event that there are classes that um, you don't, you know, you don't want to see them on the list, or you all they change the name of the class, or whatever you want to get rid of the class. You would go, you would come up to the same screen that you had. You would touch the 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 drop the drop down on the top right, yeah. select the class, and change to what I call the RSC, which is a record status code from A to X. Once you change it to X, the class disappears from the uh, list that you select classes out of. So this way it allows you, you know, as you keep adding, you can control the length of that list and not have 1,500 classes laid out uh, for you to, you know, while you search for one, you can uh, have a shorter list. Okay. This is, again, this is the event selector uh, where you select the classes as you come in the first time. Um, historical data and the DTMS piece um, and the export to DTMS. To, to be able to go back in time, now keep in mind that after using the database over a period of time, you would be able to go back and print out the rosters. The data doesn't disappear. It retains the attendance for all the classes that you ever scanned. So um, to get into the what I call the admin piece of it, there's a password that you'd enter, and once the database has been distributed to you, you'd get that password. You type the password in, and it brings you, once you type the password in, it brings you to this screen here. This screen is important because uh, if you have two classes in a day, if you want to get rid of the names that you scan in the first class, you have to come and archive the class in the admin uh, part of the database. So uh, you would come, you would put in your password, and this screen up, uh, appears. Up at the top, it says uh, current classes <coughs> and archive classes. You select the class, it would show you all the dates that, if you select the current classes, that is, it would, and you select the class, it would show you the dates that that class was uh, scanned. You select the dates, and the names would appear on here also. At that point, you can do a couple of things. You can print a class roster again. You can do an export where you're going to take the data and send it to DTMS. And you can also archive the class uh, from the screen. So let's go through one by one. For the class roster, it's pretty straightforward. You did the same thing on the previous screen. Uh, so here's another opportunity for you to print the class roster again. Uh, or if you had a class that happened four weeks ago and you're trying to figure out who attended the class, you click on Archive Class, select the class. It shows you all the dates that that class occurred. You select the date, and all the lists of names appear, and you print it off, and you have your roster again. Uh, for DTMS Export, uh, you're going to select the class. Again, the names show up on, your, on the right, uh, on the list right there. And you click on the export button. At this point in time, the export button goes through the same process as if you were um, exporting the attendance roster. But this time, it's going to export an Excel file because that's the file type that the DTMS people accept. And the same process, you save, you save that file in some location, or remember where you save it, because you're going to need that file to send it to the DTMS people. Now, the question, of course, becomes, how does it get to DTMS? Um, from here, the arrangement that I have been told has been made is with Mr. Kenneth Russell. Mr. Ken Russell, he works here in Medcom at Fort Sam and um, would collect those files with the attendance and consolidate them from throughout the country or throughout Medcom and then send them to DTMS. 
how does Mr. Russell get these files? Uh, for those of you familiar, there's a, a ARM, ARM deck safe access file exchange. Uh, you would be using that program to get the file transferred securely uh, to Mr. Russell's desktop. Um, if you need more information on the ARM deck process, there's a link uh, in the slide. You just click on it and it will give you all the things that you need to know. It's a typical AKO thing. You log in, you create, a, create an account, and you upload the file to them. Um, and then Mr. Russell either logs in and, and, and downloads the file and then sends it to DTMS. Uh, if there's any question with that aspect of it, you can, of course, give him a call at 221-8013. That's 210 uh, area code. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, here is the scanners that we use. It doesn't have to be this one, uh, this particular model. Uh, the point to remember about the scanners is that it needs to be able to scan um, PDF 417 barcodes. And that Any scanner that can meet that um, criteria you will, you can use but this is the one that we've been using and his work uh, is pretty quick and it, it does what we wanted to do so which is why I put it on there but by no means you have to use that one uh, if you don't want to if you have another PDF 417 scanner um, I want to reiterate the part about the uh, cable the cable is important when you buy the scanner the scanner normally comes in a box by itself uh, when you're ordering, you have to order the cable also, so don't don't forget that. Otherwise, you'd have a scanner with no uh, cable to connect to the computer. Um, before I take any questions, there were some little notes I uh, made. There's some limitations to the program, and I just wanted to point out the limitations um, before I take the questions. Uh, one of the limitations, the biggest limitation that I see, is like you have I don't know you have a you're doing training for a day you have three classes everybody's supposed to attend all three well you expect everybody to attend all three you are at the same location you can clearly see where I'm going with this is that when you scan their cards the first time you only kept it attendance data for that first class it means that if for the second and third class you got to go back and rescan again so that you can capture the second and the third all of the people didn't leave the building or go any place everybody's still there waiting for you to continue but for you to capture the attendance you have to do the second scan and the third and the third scan um, it is a it is a limitation that we recognize here and at some point I suspect if there's um, what should I say, feedback from the field that that's a big issue, then the powers that be where I work would, would have me go ahead and add that functionality where you'll be able to select the number of classes you have and just scan the individual card once and it would apply to all three classes. So that's the, um, that is the main uh, limitation that I see. So at this point now, I'm ready to deal with questions. Um, on looking at the chat, I saw that has it been tested in a virtual environment? And I'm not sure what how the word virtual applies. Um, if you're talking about if there's a web-based version, we here at Fort Sam have a web-based version that's, how should I say, configured for us to use here at Fort Sam uh, in our DSC. But can it be moved to a web? Yes, it can. The reason that we chose Access is because Access is portable. If you doing feeling uh, training out in the field or someplace where there's no connectivity to the internet, then it doesn't matter because you got your laptop and you got your scanner and you can be independent of, of um, connectivity. So which is why we did the, the Access thing. Of course, if it's web-based, then you've got to have connectivity, which might be fine, you know, 70% of the time, but the other 30% of the time, you're in a place that you don't have access. Okay, um, is there any other question? I'm going to take my hands free off and just uh, listen or guess, wait for any feedback. Uh, Ms. Cruz? Okay, do we have any other questions for Mr. Williams?
Okay, Mr. Williams, there is one in the chat box. Do you see that? I'll bring it over to the middle so it's a little larger. I'm, I'm going to go back to hands free for a quick minute here. Um, and I guess I need to scroll to the end to get it. Here we go. Um, let me just take them in the order that they came in. So after the virtual, we had um, Rupi, Miss Rupi. Uh, yes, good point. Good point about the immunizations. Um, our um, uh, there's this medical, there's this program that they use with the med for the immunizations that they use the same set of scanners. That is true. Uh, this next question is uh, from Mears. Uh, Michael is, if I'm using this, can I scan directly into the DTMS or Apex? DTMS, no. DTMS is kind of, is we've been trying to work through Mr. Russell to um, get where we can connect directly here at Fort Sam connect directly to DTMS to uh, upload the data from our database to theirs and so far that that hasn't come about as you might imagine uh, they probably very skeptical to have people playing have that in other words I don't think they want to manage so many people coming in with different they would rather we consolidate the data like we're doing right now and send it to them that way uh, but there's no direct link to uh, to DTMS at this point. Right. Um, from shape, um, from shape, uh, Mr. Sermons. I um, was reading recently about the changes to well, actually, it's more than a year now. The changes to the CAC card with respect to the Social Security numbers and where it's located. And the next phase as they go about, I read recently, was that they're gonna take the scan, the barcodes off the back of the cards. And if you recall, um, we use the front barcodes. Um, so far, I have heard nothing about the removal of the front barcode so far and the data that's contained therein. Um, I think that's that's um that's about it on the questions as far as I as far as I see. Um, any other questions, or do I need to clarify anything that I said okay, previously? Anyone else? Last call for questions. I, um, for the people, um, I, I didn't talk about the distribution of the database and how they get it. Um, right now, it's been kind of passed around through word of mouth, and I have some little disks that I make these things. Um, the problem with email in the database is that the, the email filters strip out the attachments, and then we had to come up with some tricks to get it through the email thing. But uh, if you need it then send me an email my email is on the slides send me an email and I would I would get it to you if I got to mail it I'll mail it if I got to email it with some tricks then I, I I will but that would be the way also by the way the password for the uh, for the admin the admin password is not specific to anything in particular it's one password so regardless whichever database you have you're gonna have you're gonna use the same password and it, you can't configure the password and I just put that in there so that people don't play about uh, with it. Um, the one other thing I didn't talk about security-wise with respect to where you load the database, uh, clearly it needs to be on a government laptop so that when that laptop is destroyed um, or turned in that uh, hopefully the drives get uh, wiped. But this is added precaution. If you change in laptops, then clearly go in and delete the database off the, off the drive. Uh, if you will. Of course, at that point, you lose all your data. So you might want to print out uh, print out your rosters or at least copy it off of there so you can move it to another one. 
Hey, uh, Miss Cruz, I, I think that's about um, pretty much. I hope I was. Um, well, Mr. William. I hope I was kind of clear. I seen Mr. Jones, Jones Darren. I uh, he was supposed to use those kinds of when you nature between the two. So, Miss Cruz, Oh, okay, yeah, somebody who was around when we did it the first time, uh, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Okay, Mr. Williams, um, you still have about 10 minutes left. I don't know if you want to actually, um, as we did in the demo, show via your camera. The scanner and so forth. Otherwise, then we'll cut this session short and they'll have a little break in between this one and the next session. Right. Um, I, I mean, if, 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 the the only thing that I can only thing that I might be able to show through the camera would be the um how you hold the the scanner to the car, but I mean that's pretty pretty self explanatory. Uh pretty much because it's the screenshots that you see on the uh slides are exactly as it you know, it's the program it's, itself. So I I I guess we can wait around for another minute or two and after that I just uh drop off. Okay, does anyone, anyone else have any questions? Okay, great, it looks like there's none. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Hey, thanks, ma'am. Hey, 